everybody, here's a really exciting opportunity. Me, Omaze, and Adventure Drives have come together to offer you the potential to win an epic road trip across the Pacific Northwest in a 2020 C8 Corvette. Omaze will send you and a friend to Seattle to do the Adventure Drives road trip with me and my wife and Rob Ferretti and a bunch of our friends. I'll be in a Lamborghini. You're going to be set up in their brand new C8 Corvette. They're going to give you a thousand bucks for fuel, covering all the expenses, and we are going to drive together across the Pacific Northwest. It all benefits a great cause, Team Rubicon, which helps keep returning soldiers employed in disaster relief areas. I love this charity. It's a great cause. Go to omaze.com slash TST to enter or hit the link in the description where I've got a link for you right there. Very, very easy. Get on it, guys. Come on a road trip with me and Omaze in the new Corvette this summer. Now enjoy this video. Good morning, everybody, and welcome to a, uh, a drizzling day up here in the canyons. Uh, the, the coronavirus has kept a lot of people at home, uh, but more importantly uh, to this video, uh, because of the coronavirus, the 911 Turbo S press launch uh, in Monterey was canceled. And so uh, some other press launches have been canceled as well, but Porsche found a workaround. They uh, brought the 2021 911 Turbo S to my house so I could drive it uh, by myself up here for a day and still do my story. Check out uh, roadandtrack.com. I'll put a link in the description for a link uh, to my written piece about this if you want a lot of the, uh, the more considered details as opposed to the sort of real-time uh, seat of the pants thing like I do here on the videos. So, 2021 911 Turbo S, it's the 992. So, just like the 992 Carrera S, it has gotten bigger, it has gotten not much heavier, but certainly bigger. Uh, it gets all the, the, the new touchscreen, the new MMI, all that stuff that we covered in the Carrera S and 4S videos. So we don't need to, to waste time on that. Let's talk about the important stuff. The engine. Uh, well, even though this is the turbo, we know they're pretty much all turbo now, except for the, the GT cars. So the real difference between this engine and the Carrera and Carrera S engine is the displacement. Uh, they say 3.8 on the deck lid. It's actually 3.785. It's a little under 3.8, but it's 640 horsepower and 590 pound-feet of torque. That's a plus 60, plus 37 over uh, the last 991.2 Turbo S. Uh, it has the eight-speed PDK dual-clutch gearbox, which is turbo-specific. It's stronger. It also has its own ratios. There are more actual clutch plates. It is not the same gearbox. It's different. And like I said, different ratios too. The numbers, the hard numbers are 0 to 60 in 2.6 seconds, a quarter mile in 10.5 and top speed of 100 mile, uh, 205 miles an hour. Big numbers. Okay. It's 0.2 faster to 60 than before. And it was already crazy fast. And once people start running these things at at drag strips, they're probably going to beat Porsche's numbers too. It has a wider front and rear track than the last turbo, which is commensurate with the 992. Uh, staggered s diameter, staggered section tires. It has 20 inch at the front, 21 inch at the rear, 255s and 315s. It's got a reconfigured PASM, which this has, it's an option. The same uh, Porsche dynamic chassis control, rear steer, and active all-wheel drive system as before. They've increased the size of the brakes by 10 millimeters. It has adaptive aerodynamics, which can change the drag coefficient from a 0.33 in eco mode to a 0.38 in uh, Sport Plus, that's because of active flaps and the position of the wing. And uh, there is an optional light weighting option for this car. Uh, 66 pounds you can take out of it optionally. Light glass, bucket seats, lithium battery, the whole deal. This car doesn't have that. We'll go over the spec of this actual car. But suffice to say, it has all the important things that you would want uh, on a demonstrator Turbo S. And not a whole lot of things you don't. So we are gonna go off onto the canyon right now, and I'm just gonna start with a launch. I mean, you know, Party Trick is, is launching this car. We got a nice straight empty road. It's a little wet. I'm in Sport Plus. 
it's very easy. Left foot brake, right foot gas, and here we go. Lots of wheel spin. Tons of wheel. Honestly, let's go into manual mode and this road is kind of bumpy. So although I used Sport Plus for the launch, I'm going to take it out of Sport Plus and uh, put it into regular Sport for this section of road to get some compliance out of it. Now, uh, the good. You have an extremely wide power band and you have a gearbox that is uh, set up to match that power band. So this thing just makes a ridiculous amount of power everywhere. And because of how the clutches engage and because of the intended mission of the car, which is a true daily driver level supercar, uh, it, the engagement of those clutches are smooth and if you just put it in regular auto you fundamentally don't feel it shift the eight speed gearbox uh, as i saw in the porsche press materials is mainly there for fuel efficiency i mean i mean literally the eighth gear uh, top speed 205 miles an hour happens in sixth gear so and as we're up here in the canyons just like in the carreras we learned that the sort of sporty useful gears are really gears two through five. One is for launching and uh, seven and eight are fundamentally for highway cruising and uh, fuel economy. Ceramic brakes are standard on Turbo S. That's part of what it takes to get the S letter added. Now, even though this road is a little damp and a little bumpy, it doesn't feel like I'm pushing the car very hard at all. It probably on video looks like we're doing a pretty mellow cruise here, but truth be told, if you look at the speedometer, that tells a completely different story. Uh, uh, this car masks speed, and it masks speed with composure, it masks speed with compliance, ride quality, uh, and, and a real solid, solid, solid feeling. You know, you definitely don't get the GT3's red line. Peak horsepower is at uh, 6,500 RPM, I believe. Poss maybe 6,750. And then your red line is at 7,200. So by uh, GT car standards, it's, uh, it's light on the revs, but certainly massive on the torque. And uh, there is absolutely no shortage at all of uh, the lay of shift there. No shortage at all of available power, available grip. Here, as the road tightens and smooths out, we'll go into Sport Plus. So here, in the really tight sections, we're going to be using that. Oh, hello. You all right? I just stopped. We're going to be using that rear steer to simulate the shortening of the wheelbase of the vehicle. Up on the wider open sections, it turns in the same direction, simulating a lengthening of the wheelbase. One of the things I'm realizing here on this tight section, especially if you go back and see my Carrera S video from Tail of the Dragon, is that in an older 911, you can actually run sort of a racing line within your own lane. You can move about in your own lane. These new cars are so wide that you can only run one line. There is no moving within the lane. You have to run one perfect line down the middle because you've really only got a few inches to work with to, st to keep this thing between the paint. I mean, the, the 992s are you know, fundamentally some of the best daily driver vehicles I've ever driven, but they're wide. And so when the road starts getting tight like this, it matters less on the racetrack, but when the road is getting tight here, you really, really have to consider the width of the vehicle. Wow, the speed is absolutely extraordinary. 
Uh, it's crazy, crazy fast, folks. The power band's super wide, right? Peak torque is 2,400 to 4,000, and then your peak power is 6750 so it's really like 2500 to 67 gives you 4200 rpm to work with that's an awful wide uh place to have your peak power band now it's not race car screaming like the gt but you want to talk about going fast it is certainly effective This car can send 368 pound-feet of torque to the front axle, so it can really get a lot of power forward. Should we talk about weight for a second? The weight is 3,630 pounds, which may be the heaviest 911 I've ever driven, frankly. Um, that's kind of a porker. It uses the tech from the gearbox to the all-wheel drive system to the active aero and, and more, uh, it uses the tech to mask that, but there is about, uh, it's a 400-pound difference. It's about 400 pounds heavier than the last GT3 RS I drove. So that's your spread. Of course, we've got, oh, ran out of gear there. Still not used to the gearing. We've, ran, uh, we've got, you know, all this lovely leather, 18-way power seats, all-wheel drive, you know, the whole, the whole shebang of bang, all of that stuff totally adds up. And if you ask me which I'd prefer to daily drive, I would prefer this. I mean, this has a super mellow mode for just sitting in traffic that is really, really, I mean, it's mellow. The only thing is, I don't like... Sorry about my keys in here, folks. That's not, that's a sound I don't want to hear anymore. Where were we? Oh, right. Mellow mode. And we'll just go there for a second. Let's just go to normal auto. The problem with normal auto mode is the same as the Carrera S. If I can, if the car will remember to, yeah, to shift up. It kind of lugs the engine right here. This engine, the flat six... It feels rough and gruff below 2,000 RPM. And and so it really, we're now going 43 and 6 at 1,200. So if you drive it in normal mode, you will get the best fuel economy, but it's actually not the most quiet, refined experience. If you put it in sport, it drops eighth gear and gives you a couple of hundred more revs before changing up. You, say, you, do, you burn slightly more fuel than you could be burning but it's a much smoother experience. It's free of drone and or the roughness of what happens under uh, 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 low speed motoring and automatic, right? And that was the same as the Carrera S. If you go back and watch that video, same deal. Now, big torque here. Now, except for the launch, you know, on a wet road, you can really feel that power getting to the ground. I almost, you know, once I'm going over 30 or 40 miles an hour, I really have no concerns about getting that power to the ground. The agility is there. I mean, that's for sure. Not that that should surprise any of you. A $200,000 Porsche Turbo S should be agile. Yep, there it is. It's fast. And this road is a mixture of sort of open and tight sections, so I think it's a good show-off of the versatility. Oh, there's some rocks there. That'll be something to watch out for on the way back. second and third gear is kind of big. It's like probably 2,000 RPM. So I think I had that problem in the Carrera S too, where there was a big drop between
between second and third. That was a thing. So they say it's re-geared. It might be re-geared to make better use of first and eighth, but I think that issue I had between second and third is pretty much the same here as it was in the Carrera S. But for a damp road, we're on Pirelli Corsa tires, uh, which are pretty good in the damp. No issues there. Of course, it's been raining here for a little while, so the roads aren't as slick and dusty as they could be. The ability to get power continuously to the ground, you know, while going over undulating pavement, is really a staple of this car, and that, that really continues here. Woo! <laughs> it's really fast. The good news is, you know, with that gap between second and third, if you just leave it in third, if you can beat beat your mental uh, your mental demons there that tell you, no, I should really downshift here, and go, no, no, you're you're gonna have plenty of torque for this. Just leave it in third. That's the best way. Second is probably a little short for this road. But look, I, I mean, there's. There's so much to like here, okay? Obviously, it's bananas fast. I can't, on this road, uh, on this day, in this weather, I cannot go as fast as this car can go, and I think we all know that, and that's fine. But it is, considering uh, not imperfect weather up here, exceptionally composed, exceptionally responsive, uh, definitely all the attributes that I like about driving a modern 911 are here. Oh, here comes the rain. It's a good place to... Look at this. Here's going to be our four-wheel steering. Just super, super tight turning radius. So, so that's kind of where we're at here with the uh, with the Turbo S. Look, that's the good. Now, here's, here's the one that I have spec'd out. The base price is $203,500. So, it's uh, about $7,000 less than that McLaren GT I drove. Uh, last week, okay. So, uh, this one has a uh, twenty-one thousand dollars of options on it, of which I could easily remove half. Carmine Red looks great, thirty-two hundred bucks. Pasm suspension, I'd keep. Sport exhaust, I'd keep. Sport exhaust is a new option this year for the turbo. It's been open this whole time. Uh, ex Porsche exclusive design wheels, uh, painted black. That's thirty-five hundred. I could lose that. Uh, the surround cameras I would keep, lane keep assist uh, I would get rid of, lane change assist I'd get rid of, adaptive cruise I would keep. For a price of $211,000, roughly 40 k cheaper than the McLaren GTI I drove. Now, uh, as a daily driver supercar, is this one the best? Yes, it is, because it's extremely comfortable. It holds a bunch of stuff. It's totally versatile in all different weathers. I could get in and out of it a hundred times a day, and there's plenty of leg room, there's footwell room. Everything feels of an extraordinarily high quality, tight, solid, and confidence inspiring. Now, is there a downside about it? Absolutely, absolutely. Because all the Carrera models are now turbocharged, there is fundamentally no difference between this car and a Carrera S or 4S until you are going bananas fast and until just the numbers just get higher on the speedometer. They offer the similar feel. They offer similar sound at 100, 100 miles an hour. They're fundamentally the same speed. Uh, you cannot go on a canyon road any faster in the Carrera S, than, or in the Turbo S and you can in the Carrera S, or at least I can. Furthermore, this thing is so fast, and I'm looking for it right now, it is so fast that I drove it exactly 5.2 miles this morning. It was dropped off my house, I went 5.2 miles, and as soon as I merged on the freeway, I was pulled over by some very angry people, and all I did was put the pedal to the floor for about three seconds, and I was a th a threatened with arrest and impounding the car. It's the same as the Carrera S now. You know, at the time, you could have the Carrera S naturally aspirated, you get the GT3, or you get the turbo, and they all had different characters. 
the Turbo and Turbo S now have the exact same character as the Carrera and Carrera S, just in different volumes. And so all you're getting by spending the extra fifty or $60,000 over a Carrera S is you're just getting in trouble faster. You're just going to jail faster. I mean, th the feel is the same. And the way it feels at under 100 miles an hour is fundamentally the same. Um, and that's unfortunate. But as manufacturers continue to chase numbers, the new generation of the car has to be faster than the old generation of the car. Um, I don't know how we're going to get out of that spiral. Um, this car is an easy 150 horsepower faster than it needs to be. And I hate to say it, but most of the time it makes no difference whatsoever because they sell the same experience for a lot less money. So um, I love it. I love it. But it's hard to, for me to make an argument saying, yes, you should definitely get the Turbo S over the Carrera S if you can afford it. I can't say that because the experiences here are really, really, really very similar, borderlining being exactly the same. So uh, I want to thank you all for joining me. I want to thank Porsche for going well out of their way for getting me this car uh, once the launch was canceled. I want to thank Road and Track for letting me still have a job. And I want to thank those officers this morning for not arresting me, even though they said they had the speed dial and all this crazy stuff. And, and all I did was, was do a entrance ramp. That's the kind of speed we're talking about here and potential for problems. So thank you to all of them. Thanks to you. And I'll see you later.